Hello world, I'm Rancliffe, and now it's time for something completely different. Allow me to introduce to you, possibly, Dwarf Fortress, the most interesting video game you've never played. Unless you have played it, and I mean, I can't speak for everyone here, but yeah, let's talk about this, because this is a game that I really love. Now, this video might be really long, because getting everything set up takes a bit, and I'm going to take you with me through all of it. But if you can, get cozy, get something to drink, and sit through this one video with me, in which I try to convince you that this thing that I've got here is really cool, and you might want to get into it too. Dwarf Fortress is a game that many people consider to be extremely intimidating, but it's just had a really recent turning point in its development history, which is very fascinating. This game has been in development for over 15 years. I am playing the premium version of Dwarf Fortress, which costs $30 and is worth every cent. Now, the classic version of this game is still maintained, and if you don't want to spend any money, you could pick that up as well, and it is the same game, so you could technically play along with me if you really wanted to, uh, but I would not recommend that, because it looked like this. Yeah, the games look really scared a lot of people, and that's why a lot of people are just like afraid of this game. But if you already know that this is a game that you really should play with the fan-made wiki, and once you get involved, it's not too complicated. So the first thing we're going to do is invent the universe. So I've already got a few save files, but we're gonna start something new for this video. So we're going to create a new world. So here we are at the world creation menu. And I'm gonna mess with this a little bit, but only a little bit, cause we should get into this pretty soon. So I like to play on a smaller world. And I know a lot of people like the idea of like a really bustling expanse with a lot of different things going on and everyone has different relationships with each other. Uh, but the problem is sometimes you create a world and there isn't any good locations to it. So then you got to delete the world and make a new world. And I, I don't know, like this, this takes exponentially longer the more specific uh, what you're looking for is. So I like to pick a smaller world so that if I don't find any good places to live in it, then I don't have to spend much time creating a uh, much larger world than that. But actually, we're going to hit small for this because a small world in this game is still pretty big. Um, and I don't expect we're going to have two specific needs just for this introductory video. Then there's history link. We're going to set it to the minimum five years because I like to be there at the very beginning. Now, this is not the number of years that the world has existed. This is just the number of years that society has generally kept track of it. Kind of like how uh, in real life there are like year ADs, year BCs, things like that. Um, so just because we have five years of history does not mean we're going to be running around with a bunch of five-year-olds as playable characters. Uh, and I'm also going to set the natural savagery to low, because I don't want to like scare any of you guys off with making this game seem harder than it is. Uh, I mean, this game can sometimes throw a curveball at you, but it shouldn't be anything that is like too intense right out of the gate, unless you go somewhere knowing that that is exactly what you want. And then lastly is the mineral occurrence. By default, this is set to everywhere, which is really what it should be. I mean, would you rather have less stuff or more stuff? I'd rather have more stuff. So now we're going to hit create world. And while this is going on, the game is going to randomly generate a world. Then it's going to paint it with things like rivers and mountains and marshes and islands and volcanoes and such. And then it's going to plant a few civilizations down. Generally dwarves, humans, goblins, kobolds, and elves. And uh, then it'll start like, you know, simulating what kinds of things those guys are up to. What are their relationships with each other? Do they have trade routes? Does anybody do anything interesting? Do you have like uh, legendary heroes or villains or things like that? Now here we have the world that we just created and I'm not really a very big fan of it, but oh well. Uh, so you can try to get a feel for like 
if you're looking for something specific, you can mouse around and try to see, like, oh, this place uh, has shallow clay in it. Uh, the problem is that when you embark on a location, which is where you're going to live, uh, you're using a more zoomed-in map than this, so this only gives you, like, a, a kind of great detail, kind of, like, a vague idea of what's there. But when it comes to actually picking a place to live, um, it's gonna be more specific than that, so I don't like to do that very often, but you can get a feel for things here. Now here you can either play the world, or you can keep the world and return to the main menu. Now either way you have to keep the world, so I don't know why there isn't like a make new world button here, which if there was I would click on it because I don't know, I, I don't think this world is very interesting. Like you've got the forest here with the mountains and such, but then everything else is just kind of there. Although I do like the snowy area here, followed by this random ass volcano over here. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna make a new world, I'll be right back. So we're making a new world, and i just like to point out that that old world that we had, uh, it was pretty big in my opinion, but that was still classified as a small world. So that's, you know, that's a, that's interesting. I, I generally play on smaller worlds so that it's easier to regenerate them if I don't like them, but just for this video, we're gonna make it a little bit more interesting. So now we're making a new world. It's placing its civilizations, and there we go. This one I still think is kind of plain, but, uh, I mean, we, I don't know, maybe, maybe we can make it work. Alright, so we're gonna play this world. So, when you hit play, you know, it's gonna get everything set up, and it's going to give you the list of game modes. Fortress, Adventure, and Legends. Now, Adventure Mode is not out yet, because the premium version of this game was rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, but Fortress Mode is what most people tend to be playing anyway, and that's what I would have picked, so we're gonna pick that. And now I gotta pick a place to live. Now thankfully, this game finally has a tutorial to it, which still doesn't tell you very much, but it should tell you enough to the point where ev where most of the other important things you can kind of figure out. Uh, I mean, I, I already know how to play this game, so we don't need that, but maybe you might. Ah, oh, jeez, I still don't like this world very much, but oh well. So, we're gonna pick a place to live, and... Notice how, uh, when you're mousing around the area, you can kind of see what a place is like. Well, that's not really how it works, because you're going to zoom in, and now you're going to pick a place to live. When you click Embark, which is the button you click to pick a place to live, you can place an area that your site is going to be at, and, like, it's a 4x4 four four set of tiles by default, so, like, when, when I mouse over, I don't, I don't know, this, this volcano, right? And it says, this place has very deep soil. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, but like, it's saying that about this island in general, but really you can embark anywhere on this island. And sometimes the individual tiles actually matter quite a bit. Like, um, this sand, this sandy tile that I'm on, it has very little soil. But if I mouse to the right of it, suddenly it has very deep soil, just one tile to the right. And again, 4x4 four th four map, although you could shrink it if you want, and I'm actually going to do that because I tend to play in 3x3 three three areas. You can't play on much bigger uh, maps, but then, you know, the game will be laggier. And that's actually kind of fine because, like, when this game gets laggier, it doesn't really get, like, less responsive. It just plays out slower. Anyways, another thing you can do is you can click the Find Embark location, and this will let you filter out a place that you don't want to live. So, uh, yeah, sure, let's, let's try doing that here. I'd like to go to a place with a river. You don't need to, and, like, I, I like to do it partly for fishing, but only partly because fishing kind of isn't great in the late game. Uh, but I do want to have a flux stone layer, no heavy aquifer, light aquifers or whatever. Um, and it, it's nice to have clay and sand there in case you want to have pottery industries or glass making industries. So we're going to hit begin. And now the game is going to start searching for locations that fit all the criteria that I have selected. Uh, yellow means it fits some of them, while green means it fits all of them. Now, again, this is why I prefer to play on smaller worlds, because this can take a really long time if you're playing on a huge world. Uh, right now, it's searching for 25 different, uh, not quadrants, I guess sections, but on a smaller world, you only have to search for nine sections. And again, remember, this is a zoomed out view, so we're going to want something more specific. So I'm going to right click to send the settings away, and then I'm going to left click to zoom in again. 
And then again, I can right click to zoom out. Um, but let's see. I like to live in a place where humans and elves are around because those are the guys that you're mostly going to be interacting with. Also, there are the goblins, which are by default the bad guys. Uh, and you will, you might get attacked by them at some point, but like it, it's probably going to take a while to happen. So, I just spent a bit of time looking for a place to live, right? And it turns out that there is nowhere in this world that has exactly what I'm looking for. So that means we're going to throw out this world as well. And this is why I said that I sometimes will just make a smaller world so that if I need to regen it, it doesn't take very long. So we're going to do that again. And also we're going to change the natural savagery to very low. Because, again, this video is just meant to be, like, a bit of a gentle look at a game that many people are afraid of. And I don't want to freak anyone out by, like, suddenly getting jumped by a wildebeest after only playing for five minutes. So, we're gonna make a new world right now. And again, this time I picked a smaller world instead of a small world, which means it's only this big. Which I still think is perfectly fine. Uh... And thankfully, if we decide to scan it for a place to live, so we're going to set no aquifer because, I, 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 again, I want this video to be kind of simple. And I, I don't necessarily need a clay or sand industry, so I guess if there's nowhere in this... Oh my god. Okay, alright, there's nowhere in this world that matches this exact criteria. Um, but I guess that's okay because... You know, again, this is a smaller world, so it's easy to regen. I guess I don't need a clay or sand industry just for today's video. So, yeah, we'll go with that. And, um, you know what? This might be fine, actually. I don't really like uh, doing much with, uh, you know, having a pottery industry in this game anyway. So, so I'm going to set up an area that is 3x3, three three, which is where we're going to live. So we're going to pick here to live, and the next thing that's going to happen is the game is going to ask you what kind of context you're going to be traveling out with. You can do things like turn off enemies entirely, which actually might be good for this video. Um, I usually like to have them there because, like, you definitely want to, like, have a reason to have a military at all. But I guess you can turn it off. And, yeah, sure, we'll turn it off here. And the, the economy, like, it is really easy to abuse trading in this game. So I guess Hardbone makes your stuff, like, not worth as much. What are the custom settings like? I actually haven't clicked this button yet. Civilizations can attack, Mega Beast can attack, Word Beast can attack. Well, I mean, I guess that explains a lot. I'm not going to mess with any of these settings. But you can either hit play now and it's just going to vomit some stuff out for you to use. Or you can do what you should probably always do. Prepare for the journey carefully. Now when doing this, you'll be handed seven peasants and a bunch of points that you can use to spend on items and animals. I think in the classic version, points are uh, spent across dwarves and items and animals. And I'm just going to do all of this stuff off screen and explain my thought process later on in this video. So we'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I just set up everything that I want to take with us. Now, this is something that can take a really long time. So once you've set up everything that you want to use, you can actually hit save profile to create a profile for uh, what you're going to use. And I, I, I don't know, I'll just call it YouTube just in case. We'll hit save. And in the future, I can select that profile and it'll automatically populate uh, that embark with all of the stuff that I have selected. The only difference is that sometimes the items and animals that you'll have will depend on where you end up embarking. For example, you might end up going to a place that doesn't have that specific kind of wood to make that wheelbarrow with, or maybe it doesn't have strawberries there, but that's okay, that's fine. So, I'll run you through what I've selected here. I picked two rock boys, and these are guys that are trained in mining and masonry. Then I've got two wood boys who are trained in woodcutting and carpentry. And, uh, you know, stone and wood, like, they're right there. They're plentiful, usually. So, they come in handy, basically, instantly. You're definitely going to want to have the miner, at least. Uh, then I've got three food boys and i've got them trained in planting and i've got them trained in herbalism 
planting is what you use to, uh, you know, uh, plant your own food, while herbalism is what you use to scavenge the food that is already there. Part of the reason why this game is considered to be so intimidating is because it is a very in-depth simulation that keeps track of everything. So if we take a look at one dwarf, uh, you know, uh, it, it'll tell you a bit about like what stuff they've got, uh, their health, uh, their personality. It tells you a lot about their personality and their skills. It will tell you all of their skills. It keeps track of lots of skills, like what kinds of things they're good at and or bad at in terms of like fighting, uh, what kinds of things they're good or bad at in terms of like their social skills, uh, you know, a, a bunch of stuff that they work on, things like that. But anyways, that's what I've got for what I spent my skill points on. In terms of like my regular points, here's what I've decided to go with. This isn't what I would usually run with, but well, mm, oh well. It's just for this video. So I've got a bit of cloth, and I've got a bit of thread, buckets, splints, crutches, and tools. These things don't usually take very long to get, but it can be really helpful to have them right away. Uh, a lot of these things are tied to the hospital system, which we shouldn't need to mess with too much considering that I did disable, uh, what's it called, um, enemies just for this video. Uh, interestingly enough though, um, the tools that the game decided to randomly pick for me are made of bloodthorn wood, uh, which is actually a mushroom, so I don't know what that's about, but we'll go with it. They've got this really nice red color about them. On top of that, I've got some bags, and I've got some food. We've got bug bat, tripe, and cave lobsters. Uh, the game will randomly pick what food uh, you want to take with you, and it doesn't usually matter too much, but I mean, like, there is a lot of food options, because every type of animal that can be eaten, it'll count, like, their meat, their lungs, their guts, their tripe, things like that. You've also got a bunch of fish that you can catch, uh, and, like, so many kinds of things that you can plant. Speaking of which, here are the things that we can plant. Plump helmets, pigtails, cave wheat, sweet pot, rock nuts, and dimple cups. And, I mean, we'll have more food than that. We'll gather some while we're there. And uh, wine. You definitely want to bring your wine with you, because dwarves are not humans. And the dwarves in this game, as interpreted by Dwarf Fortress, are alcoholic by default. So, don't let your alcohol run low. I specifically elected to pick 41 drinks with me because uh, for every 10 you pick, uh, you also get a free barrel uh, to contain that wine. So 41 means I get five buckets, uh, buckets, barrels to hold that wine in. And we've also got five axes and picks. I want to pick more than I need because we only have two rock boys and two wood boys, but more of them are going to come on the way over time, and I want to be able to outfit them right away. Uh, again, it shouldn't take too long to create a metal industry if that's what you want, but I, I, I just want to be ready for when uh, more people come to live at the fort. And yeah, uh, that is what we are going to do in terms of the stuff that we want. Now, you can also pick some stuff like what your fortress is called, or what your expedition team is called, or what your expedition symbol is. Like, if I want to say that we as a group uh, are represented by uh, uh, a backpack, yeah, sure, we're, we're going to... The symbol of the class Infernos, it is an image of a backpack. You know what? And I'm also going to add a maple tree. It is an image of a backpack and a maple. Yeah, sure. Um, but you can also set the relationship between the two things. Like, uh, the backpack is devouring the maple. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, um, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um... The backpack is hanging from the maple. Yeah, sure, that'll work. <laughs> if anybody wants to draw that, go ahead. Um, but apart from that, I, I think we've messed around enough. It's time to actually play this freaking game. So let's get started. We're going to hit Embark right now, and we're on our way. 
You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Dorok Duthtish. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, uh, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place, Eshtantogal, Smithstorm. Strike the earth. Now let's get started. This is Dwarf Fortress. Now, I'm going to pause the game right away because I don't want my dwarves to just sit around doing nothing while I help you get acquainted with what the heck we're looking at. So, the important thing to understand here is that what you are looking at right now is a top-down view of what this looks like, mostly at one layer at a time. For example, you may see that there are a bunch of logs around here. Well, it's not that the logs are just like logs that are standing up, but if I use my mouse wheel to scroll up, then we can see that yes, they're actually like trees, and we're just looking at them one Z layer at a time. Z layers are what the game uses to track elevation. You can kind of think of it like a block in Minecraft. Like this is one block of tree. And then I go up one, and then, you know, that's when it starts spreading out into a few more. So with that in mind, uh, let's zoom out a little bit, and let's try to get a feel for the kind of place that we're living at. We've got a bit of sand here, and we've got a nice wide river dividing the place into two separate areas. We are going to want to build a way to cross this river, because, I don't know, sometimes people just find their way across, or sometimes someone will spawn in, but like they'll spawn in on the other side of the river, and they're like, I don't know how to get over here, so they're just going to sit around and doing nothing. Um, so we'll get on that at some point. We don't have many, like, mountains here. We're living in an area that is pretty flat, but that's okay. Now, again, I am embarked at a 3x3 location, so you may want to, um, if you're playing alongside me, you may actually have a bigger area if you embarked on a default 4x4 location. Now, if we go down a layer, we can see the water that these rivers are a part of. Because if we go up here, like, and we mouse over the river, technically this is open space. There's nothing here. There's nothing in these, quote, blocks, unquote. But if you scroll down, that's where the water is. The numbers on the water, it's an option that I have turned on, but it tells you, like, how deep it is. And it's ranked from 1 to 7. So, uh, like, 7 water is, like, a full, quote, block, unquote, of water. Uh, there's a bunch of fish in the river, and we can do some fishing if we want. Uh, but I guess we should probably just get started with these things. So, hold on, I'm actually going to cut away for a little bit to get everything set up, and then we'll get moving. Actually, let me tell you a bit about what I'm doing right now. So, this is personally how I like to organize things, but this does not have to be how you do it. What I like to do is categorize my dwarves into four different types. Again, rock boys, wood boys, food boys, and... I don't know, uh, other boys. And uh, we don't have any other boys yet, but uh, we might later when more people show up to live here. Now, I'm going to set this up so that each one has two different categories of what kind of labors that they do. For example, these miners, they're going to do mining, of course, and everything that I say that rock boys do. And this green symbol here means that you have the dwarf set to do whatever in addition to these labors. So, like, they will be a miner and do a rock boy thing, but if I have this set on, they can also, like, I don't know, do some planting if you've got the seeds. Uh, I'm going to turn that off, though, so that everybody is focused on only doing certain things. Then I'm going to set up what kinds of things that I want them to do. And I like to do this at the beginning of the game so that, like, I don't have to worry about it later. Now, this does not have to be how you handle things, and this is something that you could mess with more on your own later, but this is just how I like to do things. Uh, the downside to me doing things this way is that it usually pays little regard to whether or not the person is actually any good at it, because you might want to set things up so that like only the people who are already good at making armor make armor so that when the armor comes out it's always of a really high quality uh i don't tend to do that though so i'm going to set up the rest of this and then i'll get back to you guys 
By the way, I don't know if it's a glitch, but um, you can see that one of my dwarves right now is picking up their equipment. Uh, all of the stuff that we embarked with is just kind of hanging out on this wagon, which we don't need anymore, so we can deconstruct that. So right now it's slated for removal, so somebody will come over here and deconstruct the wagon. But all the stuff that you come with to the fortress just kind of gets vomited on the ground, and like your dwarves got to pick up a pickaxe in order to do any mining. Makes sense, right? Well, I used to not have the um, each dwarf set to do like mining or woodcutting or planting. I used to only have it set to like, oh, you're a rock boy, and not have the mining job enabled. Uh, but when that happens, it seems that they don't pick up the equipment necessary to do their job. Like, if I were to take this guy and disable mining from him, uh, he won't pick up the pickaxe that he needs to be a rock boy, with rock boys being represented by this one icon. So, again, I'm going to give him that uh, pickaxe icon so that he won't know to pick up a pickaxe, I guess. One of my other dwarves has already decided to start fishing, and it seems like every time I go to a place with a river, there will always be someone who starts fishing. But I'd rather have the people who are in charge of food do the fishing. But anyways, now that that's done, uh, we're going to start, well, getting to work. Now, you, there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing stopping you from building an above-ground fortress, but, I mean, it's not very dwarfy, you know? Dwarves are not humans. Uh, dwarves, when they build the kinds of things that they do, it's, it's more like they just dig a hole in the ground. And rather than, like, building the floors and walls and stuff, they just dig out the areas that they want to move, and then what's left is the floors and the walls. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to build a stairwell. And this is going to allow us to tunnel downwards into the earth. It's said to strike the earth, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to build the area in which we do that. I don't know, let's do it right here. Now, right now it says must span multiple elevations. You can't just build stairs that go nowhere. So we're going to set some stair tiles here. But we're also going to dig downwards a little bit. So we're going to go to elevation 30. And uh, basically these are just a bunch of like up and down stairs. And the, the rock boys are going to be in charge of that. If you're playing a Dwarf Fortress Classic, you actually need to pick whether the stairs are stairs that go down, stairs that go up, or stairs that go up and down. It, it's a little annoying. In the premium version, uh, the game will automatically handle that for you. Uh, next up, I also want uh, the wood boys to start chopping some wood. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to pick a giant area for them to uh, do that in, just to keep them busy. Uh, we're going to need all the wood later, but oh well. And lastly, I'm going to have the food boys start gathering some food. Uh, because they're trained in herbalism, they should be gathering quite a bit of food, which means that we should not have problems with food for a while. I'm just going to pick a... Yeah, I'm just going to pick a giant area, and you can see, like, these axe icons are places where they will chop trees. These bag icons are places where they will gather food, and there are a bunch of ways that uh, mining is shown off. Like, we've got these stair icons, because it's not actually that they're building a stair. It's more like they cut out parts of the block of rock so that, like, it turns into stairs. I hope that makes sense. But, like, you can also see, like, this pickaxe icon also represents uh, places to uh, dig. Uh, next up, okay, so right now, elevation 42 is the surface. We're going to say in elevation 35, we are going to just make a giant uh, hole of just... Um, let's make it that big. And that actually got rid of my stairs, so we're going to set that up. Uh, we're gonna put the stairs back and uh, now we're gonna unpause the game and let everyone get to work Now as that's happening, I'm going to actually uh, what is it? I'm gonna check out one of our rock boys and uh, We're gonna center on him and I'm gonna hit this camera icon That's going to allow us to watch him work So I'm gonna close that up and now we're just gonna watch him do his thing now Every one of the dwarves that I have right now is set to do a specific task And if I press you I can see what everybody is up to and from there, we're just, we're just going to watch this guy do his thing for a bit. Now, again, it's important to emphasize, dwarves are not humans. I, I mean, duh, right? But, like, 
that factors into the kinds of things about this game that might not seem immediately obvious. Dwarves are very big fans of industry, so a lot of this game will center around having places for you to just put all your stuff and having workshops next to those places that allow them to form industries so that you can form things like uh, bone crafts or stone blocks or wooden barrels or whatever things your colony might end up exporting in the future. Additionally, as stated before, dwarves are alcoholic by default. It is just a part of dwarven nature. Uh, that, that is how they are. Um, in fact, actually, if we take a look at that uh, miner that we're focusing on right now, uh, the game does keep track of a lot of things. So again, here we've got their age, we've got a few notes about their personality, their health, if they're a part of any official, like, what is it, any official member of, uh, you know, the government, so to speak. Like, uh, if we press U again, uh, we can see that this dwarf here is the expedition leader, and that basically just means they're in charge of things for now. Uh, once your population gets to a certain point, you might get like a mayor instead who is technically in charge of these things, although, I mean, it really is you that's in charge of these things and everyone else is just kind of there for the ride, but oh well. Um, going back to the dwarf that we are looking at, though, uh, it will note things like what kinds of skills they're at and the kinds of things that they care about right now. Like, uh, this person, this dwarf wants to drink some alcohol right now. Who doesn't, right? I've actually never had alcohol in my life. Um, at the bottom here, it's going to show things like how the dwarf is feeling in terms of, like, the things they've been thinking about recently. At the top of the screen, you can see a bunch of your dwarves' moods, and that's important because you can actually get in a lot of trouble if your dwarves are especially unhappy. Your dwarves don't need to be loving life, but you don't want them to be pissed off either, because an angry dwarf might, like, just randomly punch someone. And then the dwarf that gets punched, they'll be upset because, hey, they just got punched by a rando. And then they'll be angry. And then eventually everybody just starts fighting each other. That's it's called a tantrum spiral by the community. And it's, it's not fun. But besides, you want to keep people happy anyway because happy dwarves, they're productive. Um, you want your dwarves to be happy. You want them to have their alcohol. And uh, yeah. So the main reason we are digging out this general, like, big area, I guess, is because this is going to be the center hub for a lot of the things that we're going to be doing in the fortress. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, dig out one tile here, which we're going to put a door later, and then we're going to dig out a three-tile hallway. And we don't need it to be too, like, wide or anything, uh, but... Later on, we are going to want to put some... Here, let's do this. We're going to draw a three wide there and a three wide there. And this is where we are going to have our wood industry for a little bit. Now, right now, uh, our wood boys, they don't have a job to do because um, it actually does not take very long to cut down a bunch of trees. So, hmm, how do I want to do this? You know what, actually, let's do this. Uh, let's make these five wides. Yeah, there we go. And uh, let's start cutting down some more trees on the outside. Now, technically, you might not want to cut down more trees than you need, because uh, the elves might get angry. And uh, this game's interpretation of elves is very interesting. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, fuck the elves. They're kind of assholes in this game, so uh, we, we don't care if we piss off the elves. But, uh, okay, so the dwarves are going to leave because they're going to get something to drink. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build what's known as a stockpile. Now, dwarves are very particular about the way uh, they handle these things. And even though the dwarves are a monarchy with a king or a queen... Uh, they'll all work together, in general, with these sorts of things. Did I make this uneven? To I think I might have made this uneven. Oh, no, I was just missing one tile. Yeah, okay, there we go. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, so we're going to build a stockpile, and the stockpile is set to accept wood. Now, you can get really particular about the way you handle this. Like, right now we've just enabled all types of wood, uh, but you can make it so that, like, oh no, this stockpile can only have pear trees if you really want. Which could be important because some, uh, be, like, 
the material that you use will influence what the item looks like. So maybe you're like, oh, well, actually, I'd rather have this stone stockpile only carry rock salt because it's got this nice pink look to it. I'm also fond of the microcline that we've got running around here. You know what? We might actually need to make a block industry pretty soon. Uh, but anyways, right now the wood boys are going to come in and start uh, dropping the wood off there. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to let them do that. But we are also going to erase parts of the stockpile that are not wood. Uh, because we don't want these stones to be considered, quote, stockpiled, unquote. Uh, we're going to want somebody to come pick up these stones and put them in, you know, a stone stockpile later. Uh, also, while I'm at it, um, yeah, sure. Let's let's build let's build a few workshops here. Workshops are where people will take the things that are in the stockpiles and uh, do something with them. Usually, uh, turn them into something else. Um, yeah, okay, we can put this here. Now, again, this is not the kind of uh, fortress design that I would usually use, but let's keep it simple for today. So we're going to make uh, two carpenters workshops, and we're going to have one built out of microcline, which is the blue rock here, and we're going to have one built out of rock salt, which is the pink rock here, mostly as a means of showing you guys, like, hey, look, uh, the material that you use will, uh, up will change what the workshop looks like. All right, so now we've got some workshops that we can have the rock boys or the rock boys, the wood boys use, and uh, we're gonna do that. But first, I'm just gonna make sure that we um, just that all of this stone is not included in the stockpile. I don't think you have to do this, um, but I'm not fully sure. So now all the uh, wood boys will take uh, whatever stone or whatever stone, whatever wood is outside. And they're going to uh, lug it over to this wood stockpile, which is set to accept all wood. Now, there is more wood outside than we're going to be able to fit in here, but that's okay. Uh, that's just the way that I... I mean, it means that I don't have to chop the trees later, basically. We're also going to want to make a stone industry, so we're going to do what we did earlier, uh, but with stone. So, uh, we're going to dig out a 3x3 three three here, and then let's expand them outward to five by fives. Yeah, there we go. And uh, let's have it set to, let's have the wood boys start doing something. We're gonna need some beds to sleep in. So I'm gonna tell someone, I'm gonna leave a command here to make a bed and somebody should uh, come over here and start doing that. Now beds can only be made out of wood by default for some reason, you can't make rock beds uh, normally, which is a little strange, but oh well, that's what it is. So now we've got a looping command to make a bed. So a dwarf is going to come over here, and they're going to grab some wood that's in the stockpile, and then they're going to make a bed out of it. And if we check in the stockpile, we can see like, hey, we've got a bed here. And the lines on the side of the name of the item will tell you what quality uh, the bed is. So we're actually making some really good beds up front, because I had the wood boys train in carpentry before we set off. We'll make the bedroom later, uh, but right now we're going to set up our uh, stone industry first. And I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a blocks industry so that uh, we can start turning these microcline blocks and these rock salt blocks into, or these rock salt stones and these microcline stones into blocks. Blocks are technically basically the same as stone, just that they're like not as heavy to lug around because like, technically, you can use one stone to make one tile, uh, but I, it, it's just really inefficient. If you craft a stone into a block, then you get four blocks, which allows you to make four tiles of something, rather than just one stone. So that's how that's going to be for a while. And let's check on the farm, uh, the food boys. Uh, the food boys are all fishing right now, and I actually don't want them to do that yet. So we're going to go into the food boys' labors, and we're going to disable fishing for now. And the reason we're... Oh, wait, crap, I accidentally deleted it. All right, hold, hold on, be right back. Whoops. Anyways, yeah, I don't want the food boys to be fishing right now, because, um... When you fish for, uh, you know, fish, you'll get a raw fish, but that needs to be processed before anyone can actually eat it. 
Uh, so we're gonna do that, and I think we've got end. Yeah, okay, we've got enough beds for now, so we're gonna make something else. We're going to cancel this task, and we're gonna make a new task. We are going to tell these guys to start making doors. Now, uh, technically, you don't really want to make uh, doors out of wood because wood is not very valuable. I mean, it grows on trees, and uh, your fortress is actually ranked by how valuable it is, and a more valuable fortress will attract more migrants to live there, get more attention from, like, the rest of Dwarven society, things like that. So, but right now we're gonna have some doors made out of the wood here. And uh, it seems like this place is almost done. So, here's what we're gonna do. Um, yeah, we're gonna have a, uh, did I not make this place big? Yeah, okay, that's five by five. We're going to make a stone stockpile here, but we are going to set this stone stockpile to only take two types of stone, uh, microcline and, uh, rock salt. Uh, thankfully those are the types of stones that we have here anyway, but oh well. And we're also going to set this, um, this stockpile to take three of the wheelbarrows that I brought along. I think I might have brought along, it was either three or five. Uh, these stones can be really big and heavy and stuff, so if you've got wheelbarrows, uh, it's easier for people to take them there because it's, you know, it's just easier to handle even though, like, it's not actually any less heavy. And it basically means that when somebody is bringing a stone from the ground to a stockpile, uh, it won't be as much work. Wheelbarrows are only good for helping you lug around a stone, though. But, like, yeah, see, if we check out this dwarf here, uh, he's got one of those wheelbarrows with him. And it'll say, um, if we click on the wheelbarrow, uh, it'll tell you that it's a Bloodthorn wheelbarrow, yes. But it's also got some microcline in it, because he's gonna bring the microcline from over here to over here. And dwarves will basically just... Uh, fill these stockpiles until uh, there is no more space in the stockpile to fill up. And uh, it's almost at that point, actually. So uh, let's expand this a little bit. And uh, you know what? Let's say that. Uh... Hmm. Actually, okay. You know what? L let's erase a little bit of that. Yeah, there we go. We'll do that, and then we're going to make a stone workers workshop, which is where uh, the stone boys can start building some things. Now, we, we've got the stone workers workshop right here, right? What we're going to do is we are going to apply this stockpile to this workshop specifically. If I click this button, I can say only build things in this workshop using things that are from this stockpile. And it helps if you uh, name your stockpile. So we're going to say pink and blue rocks. There are more pink and blue rocks other than rock salt and microcline. But anyways, right now, this workshop is set to take from the pink and blue rocks uh, stockpile. So when I say start making some blocks, uh, this guy, somebody is going to come here eventually, and they're just going to make pink and blue rocks only from stones that are in the pink and blue rocks workshop. And we're going to do this for making floors. And this is not something that you really have to do. Uh, technically, like, there is already a rock salt floor here. But we're going to do it here just for, like, when we're building our bedrooms. Because building bedrooms is the next thing we're going to do. And it seems that some of our dwarves have already made masterpiece doors and beds. So that's nice. Again, that sort of thing is really helpful for, like, keeping track of how valuable your fortress is. So we're going to start applying some of those doors now. If I go into the uh, build menu, we're going to select doors and hatches, select a door, and we're going to place a door here because these are separate rooms, and it'll have all the doors that we have selected. Now, each one is separated by what material it's made out of because, again, they look different. So the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the wood boys are making doors out of just whatever material uh, we have in general. Uh, like, we have a stockpile here, but they're not interlinked. So, technically, if somebody has a task here, they can use any wood. This workshop for stone is only taking from the stockpile. So, anything that comes out of this workshop will only be made out of rock salt or microcline. 
So if we end up making doors here, we'll only get pink doors or blue doors. Anyways, so that's that. And uh, I think the next thing we're going to do is start making our bedrooms. Um, so let's see. From floors elevation 40 to elevation 36. Yeah, sure, we can put some bedrooms there. And here's the design that I like to do with my bedrooms. Uh, so we're going to do a bit of this. And I like to give my dwarves 3x3 three three bedrooms. You can technically give your dwarves 1x1 one one bedrooms if you want. But, like, as somebody who lives in a cramped space in general, I don't know. That just seems kind of mean. And, again, you want your dwarves to be happy. Although they will still be happy just, like, to have a bed to sleep in that they can call their own. But, I don't know. I, I Again, I like to give my dwarves their, a 3x3 three three place. It's just what I like to do. You don't have to do that. So we're going to give them 3x3 three three rooms, and uh, we're going to start, you know, digging out each of these things. And this has room for 6 dwarves, but we have more than 6 dwarves already. So, uh, you know what, actually... Yeah, sure, we'll, we'll cut off those bits. And then, uh, let's repeat this design, but we'll do it for the next few floors. So, I'm going to set these rooms to be built in multiple elevations. Uh... I don't need this many rooms yet, but more people will come to live here later. And I, I want to account for those people as well, especially since, like, dwarves will get very unhappy if they don't have their own bedroom. So you, you basically want to get on this right away. All right, so right now I'm just letting them do their thing. Since we've got two stone boys, uh, we still only we still got one making blocks and the other building the bedrooms. And I think we've got enough blocks. So, oh, there is the seasonal autosave. But anyways, uh, I think that's enough of that. So we're going to set this task to pause. So this rock boy should go help the other rock boy with mining out the bedrooms. And uh, let's set the food boys to go get some more uh, berries. Now, you can use the kinds of things that these guys gather above ground and use it for, like, um planting things so if you want to make a strawberry farm or a blueberry farm or you know something like that you could and eventually we will want to because uh that's what the alcohol is made out of and we are going to want some of that we are actually kind of running low on alcohol uh right now we don't have a bookkeeper yet and they'll keep track of how much of everything you have so we have around 20 drinks but for now let's start making those bedrooms uh so right now this is not something you have to do but well, I'm going to use some of the blocks that we made earlier, and uh, I'm going to make a pink and blue uh, bedroom, and uh, that is um, using the rock salt blocks that we made earlier. So we'll have one bedroom there that's made of rock salt blocks, and we're going to have another bedroom that is made out of microclimb blocks. And what's going to happen is, uh, as we do this, uh, if I can actually zoom in on the people that are doing it, oh, actually... How many do you know what we probably don't need somebody making the doors right now so we're gonna you we're gonna turn that off but uh somebody is going to go to this workshop which is where the blocks are oh yes that's you and as you can see this dwarf is hauling microclimb blocks so we're gonna watch this dwarf as that happens and she's going to take a block and she's going to place the block over in the bedroom and she's gonna just be working on that for a little bit so we're gonna make a nice blue bedroom and uh, as that is going on, uh, we can also check out her thoughts. So she was annoyed when caught in the rain. She was annoyed at the lack of chairs, which the reason uh, dwarves will think that is because they're thinking about the chairs for like, they want to have somewhere to sit down as they eat or drink, you know? Uh, she was annoyed at having to drink without using a goblet cup or mug. Oh, jeez. So she just had to like slurp out of the community wine barrel. So that sucks. Uh, but yeah, okay. The bedrooms are coming along nicely. Um... And uh, sometimes dwarves will get, like, uppity about uh, building these things. It says this construction is suspended, so we're going to want to unsuspend that. Sometimes if there's an item that's already on the floor, they'll be like, No, I can't reach the floor because there's a rock there, and you, you just got to unsuspend it and tell them to do it again. I don't know. It, it's just like that for some reason. And we're going to start placing some doors here because this is also where we're going to start putting our bedrooms. So... When we select a furniture item to put, we're going to select a bed, and we'll put a bed in the corner here, and uh, we're going to just have bedrooms for the dwarves, because you want to give them a place to live, you know? I mean, they live here, but do they really live here, live here, if you just make them sleep on the ground? 
I mean, like, I know dwarves like the underground, but that's not what they mean. So anyways, we've got these rooms here, and somebody has placed the beds here, and we're going to designate these rooms as bedrooms. So what we're going to do is we're going to select bedroom, we're going to hit multi, and we are going to pick these two rooms as bedrooms. And th they do include the walls of that, by the way. So now, both of these two rooms are marked as bedrooms, which means that somebody is going to sleep here and claim it as their bedroom. You can also manually assign a dwarf to this room if you want, but we're, we're just going to have them be open in general. A human caravan from Gil Odu has arrived. Okay, alright, that's a little weird, because it said, like, we were going to get a caravan from um, the dwarves at some point before winter. And I mean, yes, okay, summer is before winter, I guess. We don't actually have a place for these guys to be, but we also don't have anything to give them anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But, I, I don't know, we'll just build a trade depot right next to uh, the hole in the ground that we live in. Somebody will get to that at some point. However, if I check on uh, who else is here, uh, we can see, like, oh, this is where, uh, what's it called? This is where the caravan is. And they're just going to hang out at the corner until we build a trade depot for them to stop by at. So I've issued that command, and now somebody is getting to it. All right, it's almost done. And now the caravan is coming around with all the stuff that they could trade with us. And I'm going to be completely honest, we don't have anything to give them anyway. So we're just going to ignore them, but the Trade Depot will be there when it's time to, for us to properly take advantage of it. Anyway, I'm going to continue making the rest of this uh, floor pink and blue. Um, and, you know, it, it's a little bit weird because, like, I don't have something else. I'd like to use another color for the rest of this floor. Uh, but I guess I don't, like, have one yet. I, I don't know. Um... You know what, here's what we're going to do, actually. I'm going to set this so that we're going to spend the rest of our rock blocks. And I I, I ran out of some, so uh, we'll, we'll just do that for now. Let's pick another stone. What else do we have that's around us? We've got a few stones of borax that we could use, but not very many. Uh, so we've got some dolomite, but that's also kind of pinkish. Calamite, uh, lignite, uh, th that is not used for making ligma, by the way. Uh, but we will need it later. Jeez, uh, I don't know. Okay, you know what? Let's just keep digging downwards and see what happens. Let's go to elevation 20 and see if we can find something else there. I This is the one time I need something that isn't pink or blue, guys. So, the you know, the human caravan has... Um, what's it called? Uh, they, they've done their thing. Now, I... Oh, right. We've got enough doors and beds for now. Now, remember earlier how I mentioned, oh, uh, sometimes the dwarves will get uppity if uh, you try to build something and there's an item there. Uh, because of that, we want to make sure that the floor is installed before we place the bed there. Again, this is not something you have to do. You do not have to make custom floors for everywhere your fortress is. Uh, but if you want to make custom colors for it, like here we've got pink bedrooms and here we've got blue bedrooms, it's better to do it up front. And that's just how I like to play this game personally. We're also going to put some doors here because, you know, these may be bedrooms, but like, come on, let's give them some privacy as well. Uh, especially considering your dwarves can't have babies in this game. I guess there is technically sex in this game if you think about it, but like, it's not something you look at. It'll be like two dwarves will inhabit the same tile for one tick and then a dwarf is pregnant. It, it just, it do be like that. We don't have enough blocks uh, to make seven bedrooms yet. And actually, we just got some migrants. So uh, we're, we're going to have a few more hands to help us in this process. But before those migrants can actually help us, first we're going to need to wait for them to all funnel in and everything. Actually, wait, you didn't show up on the other side, right? Okay, good. You are not also on, like, the other side of the river. Because I said I was going to build... Uh, a bridge across the river and I haven't yet so they're just gonna hang out until everybody else shows up and now they're a part of our society so we got four more dwarves which also means we've got more bedrooms we gotta make so that kind of sucks um, so because we don't have everything set up yet I'm gonna need a stopgap solution in, in the meantime so we're going to build a still just in this corner of the room and I'm not going to put a floor here because, like, I know that I'm going to want to undo all of this later. But, like, our alcohol supply is running low. And dwarves who do not get their alcohol or get, get really mad about it. 
So, we might want Plump Helmet wine, and we don't want to make Plump Helmet wine food. So, we're going to set that so that dwarves can make um, some wine out of the Plump Helmets, and then we're going to tell someone to start brewing drinks from plants. And we're going to set this as urgent so somebody gets on this right away. Additionally, gonna go back above ground and again, gonna tell my food boys, please get some stuff for us to eat. And uh, I'm going to assign the migrants that we just got uh, some jobs. So we have an armor, a peasant, a bone carver, and a stone carver. I like to just assign the dwarves to whatever category suits them the closest. So the armor and the stone carver, uh, the stone crafter rather, uh, they're gonna be food uh, stone boys. Uh, and the bone carver and the peasant are just going to be other boys, so we're going to have them just do whatever. And uh, the whatever characters, I'm just going to have them on hauling as well, which means they're going to help with moving stuff to and from each stockpile. So now we got to make 11 rooms, uh, which means we got to have two floors built out. And oftentimes I'll also dig out a certain section of his here and then have uh, rooms on like the side that as well. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to do that this time because I want to keep it simple. So actually, let's, let, let's do this. Let's, let's set some things up in the middle as well, just because it, it just so happens that there is exactly enough space for that, which is not what I intended, but sure, we're going to go with it. And the one dwarf is going to keep working on some st uh, stone blocks for us to make the floors with. And while that happens, uh, did we... Okay, nobody... We did a little bit more... No, okay. I still want to see what other kinds of floors we can make, depending on what kinds of rocks we find. But in the meantime, let's let's name some dwarves. And yeah, you can rename your dwarves whatever you want. So I'm gonna name this rock boy Chung. Uh, I'm gonna name this rock boy. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll call him Brancliff. Uh, I'm going to name this wood boy. You know what? I'm gonna cut this out. So uh, I'll, I'll see you guys when I've renamed everyone. All right. Now hold up. I was in the process of renaming some dwarves, right? But wait. We've ex we've discovered an expansive cavern deep underground. Now, as soon as I close this window, I'm going to pause so that we can take a look at what we just found. Because these ones can be a little spooky because sometimes... Oh, that's a problem. All right, we've dug straight into one. Now, these caverns can be a little spooky because they're pretty hard to navigate like like mentally because there's a bunch of layers across them and like they go up and down. like. The mouse, uh, the tile that I have my mouse on is a slope, which means it connects two elevations. So we've got this bottom floor and this top floor connected by this slope. So we might actually want to wall this off right away. Uh, but some of these places just have empty space, which means that like they got in the way of us like carving uh, some, uh, what's it called, stairs in the ground which means there was nothing to carve. So we're going to need to fill those up, and we're going to do that pretty quickly. Uh, thankfully, we've got some blocks with which to do so, but we're going to want to wall it off, because if we check out who else is here, I mean, there isn't a bunch else here, but, like, sometimes some really creepy things can uh, spawn in. Like, we've got some bats, but they're just... They're, they're considered vermin, so they don't won't actually try to fight you or anything. They just kind of are annoying and get in the way. Uh, but thankfully, all those blocks that we made earlier is going to make it easier to just make sure that nothing gets through. And the game considers walls that you have built to be kind of the same as like walls that are just natural. So nothing will get in the way. Nothing is going to, you know, break down the walls and then like violate our buttholes. So uh, we're, we're going to put, what's it called? Um... We're going to do this a certain way. So we're going to remove this ramp, uh, which goes upwards up, up another elevation level. And we're going to keep doing that for a few places. Yeah, so now this is just a flat area. And we're just going to keep building um, some of these things with stone blocks. All I wanted to do was get some different types of stone. But hey, I finally found some. Mudstone. We're going to go back to our... Um, What's it called? We're gonna go back here, and we are going to make um, we're gonna make a stockpile that only accepts a mudstone, so that we can make some mudstone blocks. So we'll set it here, and we'll set this to only accept mudstone, and nothing else. And then we're going to erase the blocks here that are uh, have something, but it's not mudstone, because if I included this rock salt, 
stone in the stockpile, then when I build a workshop here and I tell it, hey, only take things from this stockpile, well, that rock salt stone is technically a part of that stockpile. So I'd end up with uh, that getting accepted into a workflow that I don't want it to be. So uh, we are going to remove this for now and then we can add it back in later. And we're going to build that second stone workers workshop and we're gonna have it built out of mudstone. And you know what? I don't know why, but uh, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier, but let's get a microcline uh, workshop here as well. Now, again, we're going to make it out of a microcline block because the blocks are lighter, so they don't slow someone down when they're carrying it as much. And every stone turns into four blocks, so it's more efficient. There we go. And then we're going to need to start being careful with, uh, you know, wh whatever the heck is going on here. So, um... Let's see, we're going to build a wall here, and uh, we're going to have that be built out of uh, those microcline blocks. Oh, what a- oh god, what the heck is going on? Oh god, it's a giant earthworm, and it's like throwing up all over the place. What the heck is going on? Oh god, oh god, fighting. The giant earthworm is fighting. Uh, oh, jeez, okay. Our miners are actually, like, fighting this earthworm. Okay, hold up. Let's zoom in on the action and let's, let's watch it unfurl. I wasn't expecting there to be any combat in this video. All right, jeez, okay, we've got a giant earthworm corpse here. Gross. Uh, but let's check it out. The combat logs in this game are very visceral, so let's check out what's happening. Uh, the miner kicks the giant earthworm in the mouth with his right foot bru bruising the muscle. The giant earthworm vomits. Ugh. Uh, the woodworker punches the giant earthworm in the body with her left hand, bruising the muscle. Gross. Well, alright, it's dead now. Now, let's make sure that, uh, we didn't sustain any damage. Okay, you have no health problems. As for you, you have no health problems as well. Okay, that's good. Alright, geez, that's a little gross. Um, but let's continue building those bedrooms, because we have a lot more of them that we need to make now. I should note, by the way, that you don't have to make individual bedrooms for everyone if you don't want to. It's also possible to make a room called the barracks, which it's just a bunch of beds, and whoever needs it uses it. I don't like to do that. I like to give every dwarf their own individual room. And in terms of dwarven happiness, dwarves will be happier to have their own place, just in general. Uh, but I mean, I guess you don't have to do it. But Later on in your fortress, you're going to want to stay on top of happiness because it's it's pretty hard to manipulate happiness later on. So it's best to just plan ahead for it. Uh, you, you can't just grab a dwarf and be like, stop being such a sad sack. In fact, we've already got one dwarf right now who is considered unhappy, so that's not great. Um, anyways, we're going to keep building these rooms, and I'll, I'll get back to you when I... Um, finish with this and also i still gotta name the dwarves because i got interrupted uh by that um cavern which we still need to seal off by the way actually i guess something that i should talk about while setting this up this game builds itself as being a really complex simulation and one of the ways that it does that is combat because in this game I, the combat is very visceral and there's a reason for that dwarves do not have health bars that's a pretty video gamey concept when you really think about it. No, rather, each dwarf has a set of body parts, and the game does keep track of all of them. Uh, because of that, the game will note things like, um, you know, if an individual body part is damaged or isn't working or is missing entirely, or if someone has a different set of body parts. I mean, hey, if you look at something like a cat, they've got four legs, right? While dwarves, they've got two legs and two arms. Um... This can actually get really unfortunate if a, somebody has an accident and they end up, like, being unable to walk because, like, they've screwed up their legs, for example. Or if somebody has nervous damage that makes them unable to grasp things properly. That really sucks. Anyways, with that in mind, uh, we've got our stone workers workshop set up here, it made of mudstone. We're going to set it to only take items from this stockpile of mudstone blocks, and we're going to start making mudstone blocks. And we're going to need a few of those anyway, not just to make the hallways in the bedroom, uh, but because uh, I, need, I really need to get uh, that staircase situation set up uh, in the cavern. Because, like, you know, a random earthworm, if it spawns, 
and just felt like it, it could just casually walk up the stairs and be like, oh, da -da -da -da, I'm gonna fight the dwarves and, you know, rupture our buttholes. And we don't want that. All right, so everybody is working and uh, that, oh, hold up. We're, uh, we're running out of alcohol again. We're gonna brew some drinks from fruits. Earlier, I had the food boys pick out some uh, food above ground. If we go into the kitchen menu, we can see like, oh, we've got some blueberries, we got some blackberries, and I want to mark those as not to be cooked because I'd rather them be uh, made into alcohol later. So we can get some cranberry wine if we want, which is pretty cool. Um, we don't have a kitchen to actually do any cooking yet, so dwarves are just going to be eating the musk melons and the onions raw. But it's actually good that they're doing that because that way we'll get musk melon and onion seeds that we can use later. We actually haven't done anything with the seeds that we have yet. I still gotta do that, but you know, like there's an order for these sorts of things and like we can't do everything right away, you know? Speaking of which, I'm getting a little hungry myself. So I'm just gonna let this simulation sit for a while and I'll be right back. So as I continue to set things up, the season changed to autumn and I got this message. Although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, the supply caravan from the Clasp of Infernos is a welcome sight. Their eyes are alight with the anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious crafts dwarves. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow and meaningless death. Now. The game does not expect that you would have gotten a human caravan before the first set of dwarven caravans shown up. Uh, but that's okay. Um, annoyingly, we still don't have much to give them because we're just not ready yet. Uh, but that's okay. They'll show up here. And it's important that you take note of the dwarven caravan specifically because they're your kind. They're your bros. So when they show up, you'll get a button that says diplomacy. So let's talk. I am your liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. So we hit OK, and then he says, the world is the same as ever. Now, the world has only kept track of history for the last five years, so that's not especially surprising. Uh, but this message may change depending on if circumstances around the rest of the world have changed, and whatever that entails. So we'll hit OK, and next, uh, make requests for next year's caravan. They'll charge more for these items. So you could go up to them and be like, hey guys, uh, can you, next year when you come around, could you bring some more seeds? We're going to hit done on that. And uh, they will bring those things, but they'll charge more for them as a reaction to you saying that you want them specifically. Then they'll, they'll tell you what they want. Rock scepters and pearl bracelets. Now, next year, when they come around again, they will offer 209% for those rock scepters. So that's something we might want to start working on. The pearl bracelets, I'm not so sure we'll be getting any of that up. Although right now we don't really have a crafting industry anyway. Because uh, I'm still setting up the bedrooms. Uh, th there's just a lot of things you got to get to at the start of a fortress, you know? And for some reason, I decided that it was just really important that we made all of the bedrooms pink and blue. Oh, wait, hold up. No, I don't want a door there. No, that, no, I want a bed there. Yeah, we'll, we'll play some more beds here. And uh, right now, I have it set to use the closest material, so it's just going to use whatever bed it's there. I don't care too much if we're, like, using a really nice artisanal masterwork bed if we're, or if we're just using a whatever bed. Uh, just because, again, th this fortress is just for this video. Oh, wait, hold up. Okay, okay, no, hold up. Nope, <sighs> didn't mean to do that. And that means that I got to cancel all these tiles one by one. That is not the setting that I want to have set for the floor. I don't want to use whatever floor. I specifically want to use mudstone blocks for the floor because that is the reason that I made a mudstone, uh, what's it called, uh, stockpile to begin with. While things get worked on, I'm going to do a few things that I probably also should have done earlier. We're going to set up a stockpile that we're going to have for a lot of the other stuff that's still just kind of hanging out outside because we didn't make a stockpile for the things to be moved to earlier. So just like everything else that um, is left outside, we're going to want to bring that inside. Not the unprepared fish, though. Well, we're going to leave that out for now. Um, and we don't want to bring in the corpses and refuse. That'd be kind of gross. 
Um, so we'll bring in the weapons since that cons that's also like the the battle axes, which are used by wood boys. And we'll bring in other supplies like the cloth that we got earlier. Um, specifically, I. I'll do it for this video. I'll, I'll enable the furniture to be moved here as well. The, the reason I don't like doing that is that means that like every time this dwarf makes a door or a bed, that'll get moved to this stockpile. And I don't really like doing that because it just takes up a lot of space. And I like the beds and uh, doors and such just being left at where they wherever they were made. Um, like half of this is going to be taken up by just the furniture. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have to expand this out in order to have room for everything. So let's, let's just do that. So it's just dawned on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I actually have 14 uh, bedrooms per floor, which means I didn't even really need to start working on the second floor yet. But uh, that's how that is. Now, I want to close out this video soon because uh, the patrons are calling me to do a bit of VR. Uh, but before we do that, let's, I'll finish up a few things. First off, we'll bring out the uh, rock salt blocks to show off what trading is like. Then we're going to build a drawbridge. And that's in the constructions bridge section. Uh, we're going to have it be facing... We're going to have it be facing this direction. And this is just so that like we can cross the river if we ever need to. Constructions, bridge. Later on, you can hook this up to a lever so that you can pull it whenever you do or don't want to have the bridge raised. So we just brought over a few bricks to the traders, and we're going to do a bit of trading with them. And then I'm going to set up a farm, and then that'll be it for this video. Um, in the meantime, I guess let's also set up these bedrooms. We did just get a few more migrants, so now our population is at 18 dwarves. And it turns out I prepared more rooms than I needed to because each- Oh wait, hold up. You've discovered a magma pool. Pause, 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 pause. That's a bit spooky. Uh, where is it? Where is it? And also, can you guys, like, leave this area? I'm trying to wall this off. But, um... Wait, really, where is it? Oh, it's- It's connected to the cave that we've already been in. Jeez. All right, we want to wall this off later so that nothing gets in our fort. The problem is that we need these two dwarves to leave first. And you don't have direct control over anyone. They do whatever they want. And, like, sometimes even if you have them set to take a job, sometimes they just, it'll say no job and they just won't feel like doing it. I don't know. But we're, we're going to end the video soon anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Anyways... God damn it. The dwarves... The dwarf merchants left. Which means I no longer have anyone to give the bricks that I logged here to. Dang it, I can't show off trading in this video. Oh well, I guess you're gonna have to pick up the game soon and try it yourself. Next up, I want to show off what farming is like. And then we'll close off this video. Construction, or no, it's workshops, farming, farm plot. Oh wait, no, we can't do it here because this is too below ground. Yeah, we, we need to put it somewhere here. Something more, like, soil-y. Yeah, so let's do a bit of this. And I just want to show off what it's like. Uh, again, this is something that I probably should have gone to sooner, but... Alright, we're going to build some farms here. There are above-ground plots and below-ground plots. And these are going to be below-ground plots. Ab Below ground plots are a lot more limited in what kinds of things you can grow in them, uh, but like they're, you can also place them in a lot more places, and you're kind of shielded from the outside world a little bit. We're going to have it set so that every season they're going to grow some dimple cups and some plump helmets. Uh, plump helmets are mushrooms, and they're pretty easy to make a bunch of, so... Whenever you have the seeds, a farmer is going to come over here and they're going to plant the seeds. Now one thing you may want to do is go into the uh, labor settings and then standing orders. And we're going to have it set so that the only people who actually do any harvesting are the farmers. 
because the amount of stuff you get back from a harvest is determined when you harvest it rather than when it's planted and the higher the planting level of the person who harvest it uh, the more food you'll get and that's pretty important Although these are really big farm plots, and I think I only brought nine of each seed, so we're not going to be able to fill this up entirely, but oh well. Now if you click on, uh, what's it called? If you click on a farm plot, you can see how many seeds are planted there. Like we've got a bunch of dimple cups spawned there, which we can use to grow dimple cups. Uh, but overall, yeah, this is Dwarf Fortress. Uh, in this video, we have invented the universe, found a nice place to live, and we started making a few industries. We can spend our wood creating. I, I think we've I, I think we've got enough beds now. Actually, uh, we found out how to install some new floors so that we can um, what's it called? So that we can make some pink and blue bedrooms, I guess. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oh no! God damn it! Ah. But yeah, I accomplished most of the things that I said I wanted to do in this video. I guess there are a few things that are left undone. For example, I didn't finish walling off uh, the cave. And like, it's a little annoying because I've got this job here saying, Hey, somebody wall this off. But nobody's doing it yet for whatever reason. And like, we gotta be careful about when we do it. Because some of these dwarves just, I don't know, they just wander off. And... <sighs> what are you doing? Attend a meeting? You're having a meeting inside the caves? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? <laughs> okay, you know what? No, 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 we're not gonna do this. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna designate a zone again. And we're going to say, hey, the meeting area where everybody hangs out is in, is in here. Now, whenever dwarves don't have a job, this is the place that they're more likely to hang out in. And in terms of walling off the cave, okay, good, we did that. Now all we need to do is repeat that, but on this layer as well. Okay, once that block and that block get filled in with wall, then that should mean that we've walled off the fortress, which should be fine. Then again, okay, hold up. Hold up, where were you? Oh my god. This, this, this is going to cause so much trouble, isn't it? Well, the good news is, like, okay, even... You've discovered a downward passage. Hold up, hold up, that's... Okay, th hold up, this isn't in the script. Um... Oh, it goes all the way down here. There's there's just like a big hole in the ground. Okay, again, that's not what I'm looking for. But... <sighs> okay, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tell the dwarves to get rid of this wall so that we can let those guys back in. Okay, the wall is gone. Here's what we're gonna do. This is something that you're going to need to know how to do at some point anyway, so eh, whatever. We're going to make a burrow. Burrows basically tell your dwarves, hey, you have to be here right now. We're going to assign everyone to it. And now everyone is going to stop what they're doing and they're going to go here. Now, let's, let's, let's make sure... Let's make sure that everybody is inside. Get, get, get in. Now, I can't keep track of everyone, but I assume that's everyone. So now, construction, mudstone block, hold up. Let me just make sure everybody who still has a job is inside the fort. Yeah, okay, it's, it seems like we got everyone, cool. So now we're going to turn, we're gonna pause the burrow so that everybody can leave and, oh, there was somebody left. Okay, he got in, whatever, it's fine. Okay. Now, we need to make a floor here because there's some open space. I don't know, we'll use another microcline block. And then we need to build this wall and this wall. And hopefully the floor being built means that we can do that. Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. Now the caverns are walled off. Now we're safe. 
we've got the inside of our fortress. We've got our wood industry. We've got our stone industry. Uh, we started work on doing a bit of farming. We've got our bedrooms, and I built the bridge to cross the river. <sighs> we've done a lot in this video. So that's Dwarf Fortress for you. And I really hope you liked it. I know that this is like a pretty basic overview of what this game is like, but there is a lot to explain before you can really get started on it. But now is the point that I'd say that you've gotten started on it. And it, like, if you were playing along with this, me in this video, it'd be like, cool. And now you should be able to figure out the rest, not on your own, but with the use of the fan wiki, you should be able to figure out everything else. So what do you do from here? Maybe you'll start a military uh, so that you can mess with all of the earthworms that are inside the cave. Maybe you'll get started in some new industries like jewelry or glass or clay or maybe you'll make some crossbows so that you can use your military to fight other civilizations. Or maybe you're going to build something really grand, or maybe you're going to get involved with that lava pool that we found earlier, and I don't know, maybe like, uh, maybe start, um, I, I don't know, throwing stuff that you don't need into the lava anymore? That is an option. Or maybe, maybe you just want to have a nice place for your dwarves to live. I don't know, there is a lot more to show off in this game, but I'd also need to play a bit longer in order to really get into it, so I think we should cut it off here, and I say, what do you guys think? Uh, is this a game you think you'd like playing? Is this a game you think you'd like watching? Because I do feel like this is one game where the experience of playing it and the experience of watching it are very different. Uh, tell me what you think. If you'd like to see more videos on this game, please let me know. I'd be happy to make a ton more. Uh, but I've been called by my friends to do some VR stuff, so I, I, I gotta close up the recording here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And also, let me know what the audio situation in this video is like, because I'm using the same audio situation as I did in my last video, and I'm still trying to figure this out. But anyways, I'm Brent, or, you know what? It feels wrong saying that there, so let's go back inside. Yeah, there we go. And here we've just got all of our busy little dwarves doing their thing. Well, not all of them. Um, I did pause the labor. Yeah, okay, good. Some of them I need to give them a job. But anyways, I'm Brancliff. Goodbye, everyone.